News 3, the Old Dominion Bull Court Press. It is a February that will help sort out who is still alive in March and the silver and blue hoping for a late push during the final month of the regular season. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on the Old Dominion Full Court Press. It's a week that sees the Monarchs face the top two teams in the East on the road and return for a Super Bowl Sunday showdown with the squad battling for the top spot out West. And that stretch out to a rough start with Old Dominion up 13 to 7 last night. Florida Atlantic exploding on a 31 to 5 run to burst ahead and putting the Monarchs in a 23-point halftime hole. ODU would trail by as many as 33 points in the 81-62 defeat. Austin Trice scoring 19 points and pulling down 14 boards in the losing cause. The Owls showing off their depth, outscoring the Monarchs in bench points 36-5. This is just the fourth loss suffered by ODU to FAU in the 15 all-time meetings. The two teams meet again two weeks from tomorrow in Norfolk. Old Dominion wasting no time turning the page. After last night's loss in Boca Raton, the squad in Nashville tonight preparing for tomorrow's matchup with Middle Tennessee, another squad at which the Monarchs are looking up in the standings. The Blue Raiders come in having won six of their last seven games. The Monarchs will have their hands full as Middle Tennessee, a perfect 10-0 on its home floor this season. Josh Jefferson is a guy ODU will look to keep off the foul line. He's made nearly 92% of his free throws this season, which is good enough for 10th in the country. Jeff Jones and company have had the Raiders number recently, winning the last four games in the series. It's the next game in a week that features three contests, meaning no days off and plenty of travel this week. It just changes the, the preparation uh, schedule uh, as, as, as you go. but. Uh, you know, the players probably don't mind that much, quite honestly. Yeah, they, they'd rather play games than practice anyway. We have a full schedule this week. Uh, Got to get them on the road, go to Florida, and then after that, turn around, go to Tennessee. Um, it's just a challenge, you know, just stay mentally locked in, stay focused. Um, but I think we're up for a challenge. Tomorrow's matchup tips off at 7 o'clock, and you can catch it on ESPN+. Plus. Your next chance to catch the Monarchs at home Sunday afternoon when UAB invades Chartway Arena. This is a squad that Old Dominion will look to slow down as the Blazers 81.3 points per game, ranking them ninth in the nation. They're in a battle for the top spot in the Western Division and currently 39th in the net rankings, the highest ranked Conference USA squad. This means they have the best chance of getting into the NCAA tournament without winning the conference. That's a two uh, o'clock matinee contest on Sunday afternoon. A look at the upcoming schedule. Next week, it's back on the road for a couple of rematches with Marshall and Western Kentucky, then back home to finish out February with the two division rivals from Florida. Still a chance for the Monarchs to make some headway in the standings with eight games remaining on the slate. And up to the minute, look at the Conference USA standings. FAU's win over the Monarchs last night, extending the Owls' lead in the Eastern Division with Middle Tennessee close behind. Charlotte with a winning league record as well. ODU gets another shot at Western Kentucky next week. Out West, still a very competitive division with five of the seven teams boasting winning conference marks. North Texas asserting itself with UAB and Louisiana Tech nipping at the Mean Green's heels. The Blazers and Bulldogs, the only two teams from the West, remaining on Old Dominion's schedule. How about our weekly check of the Monarchs stat leaderboard? CJ Kaiser still holding that top spot in scoring, average to the tune of nearly 15 points per game. Austin Trice close behind, eclipsing the 12 points per contest mark. Kalu Ezekbe with more than 11 per outing. To the glass we go, where Trice raising his average by a full rebound to 8.3 per game in the past week. Mikai Long closing in on that 7 per game mark with Ezekpe at 6.5. Now to assists. Who's doing a good job sharing that rock? Jalen Hunter tops the team nearly 4.5 per contest. Kaiser nearing 2 per outing. Ezekpe dishing out more than 1 per game as well. To the defensive side, picking opponents' pockets. Hunter also pacing the Monarchs in steals for the season. Long and Ezekpe continue to help uh, the squad on the defensive end as well. And finally, who is seeing the most time on the court? Kaiser back on top in minutes, just ahead of Hunter. Long rounds out the top three, still seeing plenty of time out there for the silver and blue. Well, plenty more still to come. Two freshmen continue to get valuable experience both at practice and in games. We'll hear how these newcomers are progressing in the eyes of the upperclassmen and get some Super Bowl picks. That's when the Old Dominion Full Court Press continues right after this. Live from New 
News 3, the Old Dominion Bull Court Press. Now the jump from high school to college basketball is not an easy one, but two freshmen have been making their presence known for Old Dominion. It may not show up in the stat sheet every night, but ask the Monarchs, and the contributions are definitely there. Guards Emo Essien and D'Angelo Steins have played some key roles throughout the season off the bench. Steins a two guard, seeing just over 11 minutes per game. Jeff Jones says it's been tough to get him minutes with the log jam at that position, but adds Steins will be a terrific player for the Monarchs. Essien seeing nearly eight minutes per game at point guard and has contributed in some ODU victories as of late. Their teammates are noticing their progression as well. D'Angelo Steins, you can see it in Emo. Um, Emo definitely stepping it up and giving us great minutes. Um, but it starts in practice, you know, he's been having a great couple weeks. Uh, he's been getting a lot better, learning the offense and stuff like that, and doing a better job of coming out there and contributing. I mean, I've been in their shoes two years ago. It's, it's definitely tough, but if you just have to stay the course, stay in the gym, it's not always going to be fair as a freshman. That's just how it is. But they've always done a good job. I try to give them as much advice as possible. Essie and seeing time in all 23 games, Stein's playing in 20 contests. Finally tonight, when Sunday's game with UAB wraps up, many fans will leave Chartway Arena and get ready for Super Bowl 56. Coaches and players are no different. The Rams and Bengals meet in the big game on Sunday evening, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a sports fan who does not have a pick or a preference. Personally, I'm pulling for the Bengals, but I think the Rams will get that win. Of course, this is a matchup of two teams that many did not expect to be the final squads left standing, and several of the Monarchs looking forward to the action. I'm going Rams just because of the defense. That's, that's, that's it, I'm going Rams just because of the defense. Bengals are a great story, uh, and they are you know, playing well right now. But when you look at the big picture, uh, you know, I just think the Rams, you know, they, they went out and, and, and they, they, they got either through trades or through paying a lot of money, they, they got the, the stars. And it seems like those stars are paying off. I want to see the Bengals win. I like Joe Burrow. I like that, I like that duo with uh, Jamar Chase. So I'm going to go with the uh, Bengals. This Cincinnati's first Super Bowl appearance since the 1989 season. The Rams there, of course, three years ago. And that wraps up tonight's edition of the Old Dominion Full Court Press. The Monarchs in Middle Tennessee get going tomorrow night at 7 o'clock.